Ledger Brewery, the Golden Champion. Too short to be drinking shitty beer. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze videos. Sun is over the yard arm and that means it's time for a beer. And the beer I've got today is the Golden Champion from the Badger Brewery in Dorset in the south of England. Before we go any further with this beer, I'm really not expecting much. It's in a clear bottle, it's a light coloured beer and that is just a recipe for skunkiness now I've got this from Tesco's. I'm hoping that they have kept this out of the light. I've done my best to keep it out of the light. It's been in the fridge for ages. I'm bringing it out now. I don't really want to talk too much because the light can turn a beer in minutes, especially in a clear bottle. Why they do it, I don't know. It's just as easy to put it in a brown bottle. But I'm gonna stop there because I've ranted quite a lot about this beer in clear glasses, clear glass before. It's just, I don't know why they do it. I'm sure it's a marketing thing because they think people need to see what beer they're getting in a bottle. It's fucking stupid. It ruins the beer or it's got the potential to ruin a beer. Anyway, rent over. Let's see what this beer is all about. All right, it's a golden ale. Fucking hell, does it get a ginger kid down here? I thought it was a dog. How fucking weird it is. Um, 4.5%. 500 ml bottle, golden ale on the back. It says, it's got a lot of spill and nonsense on the back. It says, a bright golden ale with floral bit, floral hints of elderflower, light and refreshing, a crisp taste of summer. Hmm, interesting. These golden ales can be hit or miss. The hobgoblin one that I tried before, can't remember the name of it, absolute fucking rubbish. Fuller's Golden Ale, the Honeydew, really good. What was the others? There's a couple of others that I've tried, Golden Owls, and some have been okay. Oh, the Golden Hen from Green King, you know, the old speckled hen family of beers. That wasn't too bad from what I can remember. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Um, let's get this open and see what's going on. Right, I warn you now, if I open this and it's skunky, there's going to be a rant. If it's okay, then we shall proceed. Prepare yourself. Yeah, fucking skunky. Yeah. Not massively skunky, but skunky nonetheless. Oh, why do I fucking do that? Fucking annoying that is. Here's the cap. Typical Badger Brewery cap. Honestly, light beer is just renowned for going skunky. In a clear glass. It wouldn't be so bad if it was dark, you know, dark beer, sometimes you can get away with that, but light beer in a clear glass is just fucking asking for it. <sighs> Rotten vegetables. Right, let's get in the glass. Fucking annoyed me now it does. Right, I'll leave it in there for now. You get the picture. There it is in the glass. Nice golden colour, lots and lots of carbonation. Two, two finger head. It's just skunkiness, that's all I'm getting. Right, let's get it down the hatch. Cheers. Well, 
Right. Ignoring the slightly skunky flavour, it's not as bad as the smell when I first opened it. It's calmed down a little bit, but it's still there and I can taste a little bit of skunkiness on it. But, that aside, there is absolutely huge biscuit malt on the end of this. Lots of carbonation. Earthy hops, earthy British hops. Big biscuit malt finish on the end. And all the way through, a little touch of skunkiness. In my opinion, that has ruined what could potentially be a really nice bottle of beer. But, ah, uh, why do you do this? And you know what? Do you know what the annoying thing about it is? It costs no more to put it in a brown bottle. The cost is exactly the same. Why, oh why? Now I've heard rumours that you can get hops that have been treated specially so as they don't go light struck. But why, why, why should you be treating artificially treating hops when you can just as easily just put it into a, um, a, a, a brown bottle? Yeah, it can go. It can still go skunky in a in a glass, and, I, and that's a given. But I don't want it to go skunky. As, well, I don't want it skunky in the bottle, and it's ruined this drink. This drink could potentially be nice. Yeah, this is the elderflower, the floral sort of taste to it. There's. A huge, really nice biscuit mall finish on the end of it. And there's some earthiness that I'm getting from the hops. But there's that skunky flavour. And to be honest, I know it seems I'm overreacting and all that. And the smell is worse than the actual flavour on this particular bottle. As soon as I opened it, you could smell that skunkiness. Um, in the glass, there was skunkiness as well. And to be fair, there is a trace of it now still. But luckily the, f the flavour of this has sort of overcome that. But it's a shame. I shouldn't be getting any skunkiness on it at all. And if you put it out in a brown bottle, you know, why? They put the, the, the Cranbourne Poacher, which is a really nice dark ruby ale with damson and licorice flavour on it. It's fantastic. And it's, a brown, it's in a brown bottle. So it's not as if they're adverse to doing this, but for some reason they've decided to put their, I think it's Tanglefoot, and that's another good one. Maybe, it, what I should do as a rule of thumb now, is if I see a bottle of beer in a clear glass, to just try and hunt it down for a can, try and get a can of it. I should do that with Speckled Hen, because I want to try that, but the two times that I've tried Speckled Hen, it's been skunky as fuck. And that annoys me because it's so easily avoidable. So, taking the skunkiness away, yeah, you get your biscuit malt on the end. There's a fair bit of carbonation on the mouth, not too obtrusive, but it's there. You get earthy type hops and you get some elderflower. That's what you're getting without the skunkiness. So, what's the verdict? Well, you know, do I really need to go anymore? Do I need to mention the skunkiness anymore? No, I probably don't. I just wish brewers would fucking take that. And this only seems to be British brewers that do it. And it's usually these big fucking uh, Green King and... Well, Badger have started doing it now as well. And it's, you know, Badger, they were quite a good brewery. There's no fucking need to do it. Shepherd Neem do it on their cheaper ranges as well. You know, the Whitstable Bay stuff. And they do... All their, their good stuff, the 1698, the India Pale Ale, and um, the Bishop's Finger, they're all in brown bottles. So they obviously know it's some fucking marketing bellend who, wants pe who thinks people need to see what's in the bottle when they buy it. Anyway, let's stop ranting and raving and just, just mark this beer. Well, I would have given this a 7 out of 10 if it wasn't for the skunkiness, but I'm going to give it a 5. It's not bad, and if I do this in a can then I would have given it a higher mark. 
it's okay. It's quite refreshing. That's been in the fridge. It's been quite, you know, quite chilled, and it's almost it is cold, <coughs> and I'm still getting all in flavours. And it does taste reasonably good, but I just cannot get away from the little, slightly skunky flavour that's on there. So it's going to get a five out of ten. Am I going to recommend it? If you can find it in a can, I don't know whether they do it in a can or not. But if you can find it in a can, buy the can. And if I do, I may review it again in a can. I should review uh, Peroni. I know they do Peroni in Italy, because I've been to Italy and drank Peroni out of a can. I should really get a can of Peroni from a co-op maybe and see if I can get a decent flavour out of it. But I, I may dedicate one programme just to the whole science behind light struck beer and how it's avoidable and stuff like that but for now I'm just going to leave it there this I'm going to give a 5 out of 10 and I'm going to say get it if you can find it in a can if not don't buy it and remember beer is working class champagne <laughs>